Okay, so for this next part, it's a bit different. It says I have to identify the type of reaction. And I remember from lab that there were five types. So I just want to remind myself of what they are. There's five types of reactions that we're studying right now. The first one was called a combination reaction. That literally sounds exactly like what it is. So I can take two different elements and combine them together. And when I do, they create um, only one object here. Okay, so that, for example, is a combination reaction. Two different things combine to make one thing. A decomposition reaction is exactly the what it, what it sounds like. It's the exact opposite of a combination reaction, really. Um, so we saw this when we did the demonstration where we took hydrogen peroxide and broke it down to actually form um, water and oxygen. And so that's a decomposition because I start with one thing and I end up with two different things. You might end up with more than two things, but as long as you're starting with one and ending with multiple, that's a that's going to be a decomposition. Okay, the third one is called single replacement. And the thing to look out for, or single displacement either way, it's the same thing. The thing to look out for here is that you're starting out with an element, say, I don't know, lithium, and a complex, something like sodium chloride. And they're going to, like, trade places where the lithium, the two metals, switch places. So the lithium and the chlorine are going to be paired up, and the sodium is going to be by itself. A double displacement is kind of like that, except you have two complexes to begin with. Um, not double, double displacement, there we go. Except you have two complexes to begin with. So if I started with, like, lithium chloride and sodium bromide, it's going to produce... Uh, so the lithium and the bromine pair up, and the sodium and the chlorine pair up. Okay, and then our final type of reaction is combustion. You already know about combustion reactions. It's fire, right? It's lighting things on fire. That's where the phrase combustion engine comes from. Um, they're almost always some combination of carbon and hydrogen, maybe with some other things on there, but mostly carbon and hydrogen. And... They require oxygen, and they always produce CO2 and water. Okay, so those are our examples of different types of reactions. Um, uh, so let's see here. This type of reaction here with a K and MgBr. So this is a compound, and it's an ionic compound because it has a metal and a nonmetal. This one is the element because it's a metal, in the solid state with nothing connected to it. So that means this is going to be a single displacement because that's the only one that had metals as an element. Okay, so now I know what the type of reaction is. And then it says write a complete balanced equation with states of matter. Oh, and I have to use the solubility chart, it says. Okay, so let's give this a shot. If this is single displacement, it means that the K and the Mg are going to like switch places. So I would write the Mg by itself. I think it's going to be solid because if it switches places, it's not part of a complex anymore. So it's going to become like solid metal. And then the K and the BR are going to match up. And I want to check the charge. So K is in group 1. That means it loses one valence electron. BR is in group 17 and it gains one electron. So I want to keep those as a one of each of them. Um, now I want to look on the chart for KBR and see if that's going to be aqueous or solid. So here's K, and here's BR, and I just kind of see where they intersect. So soluble, it says. Okay, so that's soluble. So that means whenever it says soluble, I write AQ, which literally just means dissolved in water. Okay, we're almost finished here. It says it has to be a balanced reaction. A balanced reaction means that I have to have the same number of K's on both sides. So right now i got one on this side, one on this side, so that checks out. I also have one magnesium and one magnesium. But here I have two bromine because there's a little subscript here that means two. But over here I've only got one of them. So that's a problem. 
The only way I can fix this, the only thing I can change when I balance is the number that goes in the front of an element, of a complex. So I can't just make this um, into a BR2 because then I have two minus charges and a plus one charge and that doesn't really make any sense. So what I'm going to do is just write the two here. Now that messed up my K because now I have two Ks on this side. So I've got to fix that by writing a second K over here. Now that is a balanced reaction, everything is correct, and I'm good to go. Okay, so let's try it again. Let's do another one. This one is not an element, so it's probably not single displacement. It might be it might be a combination. Maybe I just take everything and smoosh it all together. It would be a really big molecule, though, if I did that. So maybe that's not it. Let's see what else we got on our list here. We got, okay, it could be combination. It's not decomposition because we're starting with two different things, two different compounds, so it's not that. Um, it's not single because I don't have a uh, an element. It could be double displacement because that has two compounds and it makes two other compounds. But it can't be combustion because there's no oxygen in the reactants. Okay, so I know it's not combustion and it's not decomposition and it's not single replacement. I'm going to try it as a double and see if it works. Okay, so that means I have to figure out what kind of complex this is. I've seen this before. NH4 is, oh, it's on the back of the periodic table, so that's ammonium. So this has a plus one charge, and since there's two of those, that means our total positive charge is plus two altogether, which means that this sulfur has to balance that. Oh, okay, so these are really, even though it looks like a covalent compound, maybe I could take this thing that's negatively charged and react it with this, which is positive because it's a metal. So if I do that, it would be Fe, and this Fe here is a, let's see, the chlorine is in group 17, so it has to be minus 1. You have three of them, so that'd be a minus 3. So that means that this iron has to be plus 3. And if this was a double displacement, it has to be plus 3 when I'm finished with it as well. And the sulfur is minus 2, because we already figured that out right here. So, oh gosh, these don't really match. So, I guess what I have to do is take the sulfur and multiply by 3, so I get negative 6, and take the iron and multiply by 2 to get positive 6. So I show that by writing a 2 as a subscript and a 3 for the sulfur. Okay, so that's one of my complexes. The next one needs to use the pieces that are left. So we didn't use the chlorine and we didn't use the ammonia. Okay, so the ammonia has a charge of plus 1, and chlorine is in group 17, so it's always a minus 1. So I only need one of each of those things. Okay, so the last step is to balance them, right? So I have, it says, let's see, let's see if I can clear out this little area a bit. Let's see here. Okay, so it says I have two of these NH4 groups here, so I want to I want to make the, the other side have two as well. So two NH4, and this also means there are two Cl in my thing here. Oh, and I also noticed that I don't have enough iron here, so I have one iron here and two iron here, so I want to make that one have two as well. By doing that, it actually means I have two iron and I also have two chlorine. Oh, wait, but there's three chlorine in every one of these, so hmm, maybe what I need to do is take an account of all my electrons. Let's see, iron, not electrons, all my atoms. There's two iron on the left here, and right now on the right I also have two iron. Um, let's see, chlorine could be next. I put a two in front of this whole F FeCl3, so that means there's two times three on the left, which means there's six. On the right right now, I have two, but there's no there's no subscript here, so that means I just have two. That means I don't have enough. So my two over here really ought to be something bigger. Um, hmm, maybe I want to put a six there. So let's see, a six goes here, and that would be six NH4. Oh, I want to write that too. I want to keep track of my NH4s. So on this side, I have two right there, two right there, and on this side I have six, so two and six. Oh, okay, obviously the two and six don't 
really match. And I also need to keep track of sulfur. Right now I have one sulfur on this side. But over here I have three sulfur. Okay, so I don't have enough sulfur on this side either. I need three. So, so what I'm going to do, clean this up a little bit. Um, what I'm going to do here is, is I'm going to multiply this whole thing by three. So that means I get three times two ammonia groups, so that's going to mean uh, three times two is six, right there, and three times one sulfur, so that's three. So by fixing this coefficient, I actually fix this one and this one. Okay, now let's take a look at the chlorine. How many chlorine I got? Six chlorine right there, so that means this is also six, and I still have two times three on the left here. So that matches, and my iron matches. So, all together, I'm going to erase some of this so i got some room to write. All together, we end up with 3NH42S. Um, I'm not going to have room to write AQ, but it's there. 2FeCl3 produces Fe2S3. Now we do need to check this and see what state of matter it has. So iron and let's see here. What was it again? I forgot. Iron and sulfur. So iron and sulfur and it's insoluble so that means I write solid. And then I got plus 6 NH4Cl. So i got to go back to, again and look at this solubility chart and see if I can figure out NH4Cl. So NH4 is this one. Oh, it's soluble all the time. There's no exceptions. Here's the chlorine. Uh, so NH4Cl is always soluble, so I would write AQ for that one. Okay, so that's the complete balanced reaction. And this turns out to be double displacement. So this is the answer. Okay, so the last part is, or of this page anyway, is H2CO3. Mm, okay, so this is one substance and then an arrow. So that tells me it can't be combination because in combination I had two different ones. Um, everything has two different ones except decomposition. So that must be what's going on. And then I, I have to I have to think about what could happen here. I want to try to form things that are stable. And let's see, if I take these two H's and I combine them with an oxygen, um, that would make water, which is a liquid at room temperature. And so I take away one of these oxygens, that leaves um, so I take away one and put it over here. That's gonna leave me with a carbon and two oxygens. Oh, that's carbon dioxide. That's also really stable and it's a gas. So this is a decomposition reaction that happens very frequently. Every single time a reaction makes H2CO3, it decomposes immediately to form water and CO2. In the next semester, um, we're actually going to use this fact, the very first experiment we do, um, to make carbonated delicious beverages. So stay tuned for that. Okay, so in this next problem, it looks like H2SO4 and K2CO3. Neither one of these are elements, so it can't be a single displacement. So I'm going to suspect that it's a double displacement. Okay, and if that's true, it means I'm going to switch the cations. So K2 and H2 are the cations. And so I'm going to make it so like there's K and SO4, right? And so K has a plus 1 and SO4 